Hey, 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 welcome everyone. Hope you had a good weekend. I hope that you guys banked last week and uh, I personally wasn't able to get into the puts at the right time and I missed the downside, but no problem. I think we'll still have a lot of room to go to the downside. And uh, real quick, before I dive into today's market state and also a couple setups I'm watching for the upcoming week, I want to make you guys aware that we have upcoming week we have a lot of economic data we have fomc which we have triple witching wix expiration um so a lot of things going on next week and, and a lot of ec options are expiring so volatility is something which we need to track could be super high or and they could run it up before the cpi before the fomc and then sell it off so either way uh uh, you have to absolutely size down, hedge your swing positions, always be closing in this market if you open your positions and, uh, you know, play, play light. And uh, if you can sit on the sidelines and watch, that's fine also. Um, keep in mind, I'm not a financial advisor. Whatever I talk here today is my opinion and I may be in some of these securities and derivatives and uh, you are responsible for taking profit and also you're responsible for managing your risk uh, which should be the goal for everyone apart from making money so let's look at what's going on now now on the es side which is the uh, you know um, spy futures basically spx futures we have e-mini futures here and uh, as you can see after we broke below that support area right here this consolidation zone a massive breakdown here um, and looks like it gapped down again and it's down 58 points and um, that's not a good sign we have uh, almost in three trading sessions um, I'm sorry in almost three trading sessions uh, we have almost covered thousand points down on SPX uh, and ES which is a massive move in short amount of time and uh, what does that mean? That means we could be near something like a capitulation event that's possible, or we follow this trend line here. So what I mean by capitulation is that we break below the support around 380, and then we, we have a massive down day, and then uh, you know we start to bottom. Uh, we start to find, find bottom, you know, on SPY. But another possibility which is likely is uh, it trend uh, you see this kind of like the support wedge here forming and every time prices kind of like found here support and bounce from this region so i'm kind of expecting it to kind of fall in this lap around uh, 3700 to 38 find some kind of support here and then have a temporary bounce from here but if you break below 3700 you know things can get nasty real fast and uh, you know i'm expecting tomorrow market to um you know be a little bit choppy next week again i'm expecting i mean you see here how the how most of the moves here have happened in in like either the power hour and pre-market so it's not giving us the opportunity to you know trade them intraday if you were swinging puts working out great but then again risk for swinging is that these can go to zero instantly uh, if sphere trading zero ETs or one week out just because the market is volatile, right? Now, leading into tomorrow and next week, couple setups I'm watching is first one, Shopify. Now, Shopify most probably will, you know, gap down tomorrow if the market continues like that. But so far, the trend on the Shopify has been down, right? We have this bearish uh, flag broke down. We then again, it broke down. Now it's forming another bear flag. So if it breaks down below 300, you know, uh, 300 support breaks, next there's not much, you know, 278 is the next support. And below that, we don't really have a lot of volume here in this trading sessions. So we can go all the way to 250 and sub that, you know, given how Shopify moves. Uh, but keep in mind, we have a split coming soon on Shopify on 29th of June. So we have seen Amazon, uh, you know, rally before the split. So if this breaks to the upside, you know, it could be a good, good breakout as well. Um, 
chances are low given the market conditions but um, if it does undercut and come back up could be a decent uh, long play and uh, let's check the flow for shop now flow 400 call for you know like uh, next week expiration and next to next week expiration and above those uh, are getting a little bit of volume and then also three 375 and 330 puts are getting volume so it's the flow is mixed makes sense right now because there's not really any uh, you know price action which is guiding us but still we are seeing some kind of uh, buying going on here based on the uh, flow but uh, this is more like a technical setup not really based on flow uh, but we can see some volume on this we, we didn't have a big down day like spy did on these two last trading sessions we had smaller candles compared to these big so price is contracting so next thing is expansion and uh, where does it expand to the downside it's highly likely given how the spy chart is but if spy starts to find you know reversal uh, if we see reversal signal shopify could be a could be the one to watch uh, either way um, respect these levels you know if it breaks 310 uh, or tomorrow if it breaks 335 you could do intraday trade uh, but always be closing uh, if you unless you are like three or four months out then it's fine um, next one i'll talk about is airbnb now airbnb um from a you know, it, it was in this range kind of uh, for a while since the IPO. Broke that range, retested, failed. So on the daily, weekly chart, squeeze fire to the downside, of course. And then now we have uh, it almost close to the low, right? 103 is the low. So if it can break below 103, we are talking about $100 and sub 100. So it's a decent short setup in this market given that it's already at all time low. And I'm not expecting a lot of people to book Airbnb given the fact that we are heading into recession. Not a lot of people will have saved money for trips and Airbnb business can suffer because of that. And I think all travel industry can suffer. So this one is to kind of watch, you know, if it breaks, um, you know, $100, things can get ugly on this one. And uh, uh, let's, let's watch this one. I think the flow on this one is also bearish. If you look at Airbnb flow, you can see that a lot of 110. So they're buying in the money puts and a little bit out of money as well, 110, 90 put. Uh, they're also buying in the money put, uh, but five days expiration. So next week expiration to avoid theta decay, but still bearish, you know, these are higher delta puts. So again, uh, bearish flow for Airbnb. Uh, chart also looks bearish. Um, so that's so that's what I'm watching. So next one I'm watching is uh, plug. Plug similar setup to Airbnb, but not all time low. But you know we we, we broke this kind of like a descending triangle here, and then uh, we broke this key level which was around eighteen dollars, and after breaking that level, uh, we were holding this, retesting it, broke the uh, you know support area and then now it failed so back to the back below the daily 21 ema so anything as long as it stays below the daily 21 i think around daily 21 is a good entry area for short if it continues to sell off you know you could see it test at least uh, 15 dollars and then from 15 dollars there's this little bit gap here plug power so just technical perspective looks bad chart looks really bad here um we broke a key support area here and then uh, got rejected on the retest and if you look at the flow for plug very similar uh have a lot of bearish activity here uh, in the money puts and also out of money puts 15 puts 16 puts um 16.5 put and uh, similar to airbnb where we're seeing in the money puts and this is to avoid theta of course and also it gives uh, them, if the move is in their favor, these higher delta uh, in the money puts will probably yield more returns and keep them safer. Um, so let's see what happens on uh, tomorrow. We'll see if they sell these puts or not, but plug looks interesting as well. And most of these are single leg orders and volume is 
size greater than open interest as well and some of these were open after like two o'clock so it's not like they opened it during the open right they were open uh, into the close as well some of these around close so uh, bearish flow bearish chart looks good for a short so far we have covered airbnb shopify plug and uh, next one i want to talk about is aa so a is something i'm watching right now i think it has made a significant move to the downside really quickly uh, but i mean it looks like a good head and shoulder setup here uh, on a higher time frame so and also this support line just kind of broke so if it can retest maybe like 58 this this area here right here uh, somewhere around 57 to 58 that's where i think i would like to add short position and uh, flow for this one is also bearish commodities in general are not performing good because dollar keeps going up this also broke the trend on a higher time frame you can see the trend for alcoa has changed and it's it's on the higher time frame especially on the daily chart right uh, we are seeing that the emas have flipped and uh, it was consolidating got rejected clear distribution sign here volume after the earnings as well so a good short setup again i would like to enter around 57 but if it breaks below uh, you know like 50 50 dollars could be a support but if it breaks below 50 next stop is 45 dollars and uh, long term it's a good short i think if as long as this head and shoulder breaks the neckline could be a decent short um, but if market reverses we can see it kind of and also one thing to notice is that once Alcoa breaks the weekly trend and flips the EMA, you can see that most probably the trend continues to the downside here. We have had similar setups here, weekly EMA flipped and then down, flip, down. So this could be a similar setup here where it flipped and long term could be a good swing short. Um, every time it has flipped, it has moved a significant move to the downside. So that's what I'm watching right now. It's about to flip. Once it does, I think uh, every time it, it tests, you know, these uh, weekly 21 EMAs could be a good short opportunity for it. Every every weekly 21 EMA retest, 9 EMA, my bad, 9 EMA retest could be a good short opportunity. Um, right now it's a bit extended. That's why I'm waiting to for it, but it can go, you know, when things go downside, they go fast. So next one, uh, let's look at the flow for this one. So again, bearish flow here in the money puts, 60, 70, 60 puts. Uh, would like to see some out of money flow as well. So next one I wanna watch, uh, I'm talking about is MOS, which is Mosaic again. Mosaic, uh, Potash, and Fertilizer name. But look at this massive daily squeeze fire to the downside here. Um, expecting a little bit retest of the daily 21 so somewhere around 60 dollars to let's say 55 to 60 in between that if it can consolidate i would like to add a short position right now it's a bit extended to the downside we have had a massive move to the downside but this since the squeeze fired uh, i think a retest of let's say maybe 58.5 is a decent entry for short but if it breaks below 52.5 there's not much volume here. You see this, this is a low volume node. So once it breaks below $50, things can get ugly fast and $45 would be fast. So that's why I'm, it's on my watch list. In case we see significant sell off in the market, these are the names I think can, can also see a sell off. Um, similar name is NTR, Nutrien, very similar chart, uh, but it has made a significant move to the downside, but sell off still looks aggressive. So let's evaluate, let's keep them on our watch list. And again, thin volume here, so you can see some significant sell off. Um, if you are planning to enter short position, buy some time on these and uh, you can dollar cost average these longer term puts. Or if you're buying, trying to buy uh, intraday, just trade them intraday. But if you're swinging weeklies or three, four weeks out, you need to get a decent entry, which would be around $90. Um, and if you look at the flow for NTR, Nutrien, a lot of sell-off here, right? And uh, this is mostly because of the macro reasons and, uh, um, you know, more the, the demand for these are still there, but supply is improving. 
and a uh, lot of uh, b- bearish flow here 90 puts for next week expiration again in the money puts and these were open around 131 o'clock so still you know this they were open um if you if you look go to the 15 minute chart of ntr you can see 9:30 we had a sell off here but these puts were actually opened around 130 so you didn't you don't see like a, i mean these opening price were when the stock was 86.29 so it's not like they opened these puts early in the morning or yesterday these were opened after uh one so around one o'clock so a lot of uh bearish flow for ntr as well nutrient similar to mos so these are the names i have on my watch list for the upcoming week along with spy qqq so be safe remember it's okay not to trade in this shop and uh always be closing your short-term calls and puts so hope you guys enjoyed this video if you like it make sure to give a thumbs up and uh, drop some comments that if you if you if you like these setups what do you think about it it's okay if you disagree with these um, you know everyone sees this technical analysis in a different way and um, i don't mind a different opinion on these so thank you again and have a blessed week